Um, we all know, welcome all of you here today. It's a nice turnout today. Welcome, welcome. And we'll get started. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Lighted Up Blue Autism Awareness event. As we gather here tonight, we come together to shine a spotlight on a cause that is near and dear to our hearts. My name is Lisa Morales Hinojosa, president of the Laredo Educational Autism Foundation, or LEAF. I am deeply honored to stand before you today alongside my esteemed colleagues and friends, Lorena Fernandez, and Dan Daniela Dominguez. As we kick off World Autism Awareness Month and embark on an excursion of understanding, compassion, and support for individuals and families affected by autism. Every April 1st, as World Autism Awareness Month begins, it's a, it's a stark reminder of the journey my family and I have traveled over the past 19 years. My son is not here with us today. Um, he sends his regards. He is studying for an exam that he has on two, um, Thursday and another one on Friday, and he's a diehard. He's studying, so he's not here with us today. With autism now affecting 1 in 36 individuals, up from 1 in 44, the prevalence of autism has, has skyrocketed to unpre unpre uh, unprecedented levels. Excuse me. Today, it's likely that everyone knows someone affected by autism be it a family member, a neighbor, a friend, or a student in their class. For me and my husband, Ben, this journey began... <laughs> you got it. Yeah, I do. But it's just... You got it, friend. It's like, you know, the first time that you get diagnosed, it just, you know, comes back. But I do. Uh, when, my when our own child was diagnosed with autism at the tender age of three, I vividly remember the feelings of uncertainty and fear, but also the overwhelming love and determination to do whatever it took to support our son and any other families in our same situation. Through the ups and downs, I've witnessed firsthand the challenges faced by families affected by autism, but also the incredible strength and resilience that shines through each and every day. My son has taught us to be a more compassionate people to see the world through a different lens and to appreciate the beauty in every individual, regardless of their differences. We're witnessing families with children on the autism spectrum everywhere in our communities. But awareness alone is not enough. What we need now more than ever is action, kindness, understanding, and support for autism. Participating in activities for autism awareness is a step in the right direction but it is just the beginning and there are several ways you may contribute. For example, if you're in a position to hire, educate yourself about employing individuals with autism. With only 21% of autistic adults in full-time employment, there's a significant opportunity to make a difference in their lives. Consider creating inclusive work environments and providing accommodations for employees on the spectrum. Hiring these employees can bring diversity innovation and fresh perspective to your organization. If you're a family member or a neighbor of someone with autism, ask how you can lend a hand, whether it's offering a listening ear, providing respite care, or volunteering with local autism organizations, every act of kindness matters. I am also deeply grateful for all the wonderful people we have met along the way. Teachers, doctors, mentors, and countless others who have offered their support, guidance, and expertise. Your dedication and compassion have made a profound impact on our lives, and we are forever grateful for your presence. I also want to express my heartfelt gratitude to all the autism parents who have become like family to us. Your strength, love, and unwavering support have been a source of inspiration and comfort, and I am immensely grateful for our unshakable bond. And most importantly, when you encounter families facing challenges in our communities, refrain from judgment, stares, or hurtful comments. Instead, reach out and offer assistance and offer assistance. Your love, kindness, and support have the power to transform lives. In conclusion, let us remember that autism is not a tragedy to be mourned, but a unique journey to be celebrated. 
Each individual on the spectrum brings their own light and perspective to the world, enriching our lives in ways we may never have imagined. As we continue this journey of awareness and acceptance, let us carry that light with us, illuminating the path towards a more inclusive and compassionate society for all. Let us not confine our efforts to a single month, but rather let us strive for autism awareness and compassion every day of the year. By fostering understanding, empathy, and acceptance in our community, we can create a world where individuals on the spectrum are embraced for who they are, valued for their contributions, and given the opportunity they need to shine. Thank you for joining us tonight. And may we carry the spirit of this event with us as we advocate for a brighter, more inclusive future. Together, we can make a difference, not just in April, but every day. Remember, different, not less. So with that being said, I uh, went to, uh, before, you're going to hear from some of our autistic individuals or individuals people with autism. I printed some stati statistics from autism speech, which I thought were profound and alarming. As we said, it's one in 36 children, one in 36. That is up from one in 44 just a few years ago. Only, and of course we know that um, it affects four in 100 boys and one in 100 girls. It breaks it down by, um, by ethnic groups, but I'm not going to go into that. What really, really I wanted to focus on was unemployment. I, along with a lot of mothers here today, have our children who have aged out of the school year, out of the school year, out of the school system. And so we're starting to see that there's not a lot of opportunities for them to get ahead or to do anything meaningful with their lives. Some of them are going to college, some of them are working, but we're still, we still have a long way to go. And that's why I wanted to focus more on, if anybody here is in that position to hire, talk to your employers. These individuals bring, a, they bring a wealth of expertise, you, they can do things meticulously, and they're really any asset to organi any organization here. And with that, um, we're going to hear from Carlos Fernandez. Good afternoon, comma. My name is Carlos Fernandez. I am 23 years old, and I currently work in a customs agency called Carrera Llamas. 20 years ago, I was diagnosed on the autism spectrum at the age of two years and six months. And one of the many doctors I visited was my parents to seek a diagnosis. Suggested that the best thing for me would be to place, to be placed in an institution in San Antonio because my expectations for optimal development would be very low. I don't deny that I had a difficult childhood trying to master my autistic behaviors and learn how to behave at school, at church, and in everything I was exposed to. Today, I thank my teachers for never stopping believing in me and above all, my parents, sisters, and family in general for their support and unconditional love. Today, I can say that I am a happy man. I can speak, read, eat with a fork and knife and many other things that are automatic. For all of you, I had to learn. I, for all of you, comma, I had to learn and master them. I give thanks to my employer for giving me the opportunity today to pursue a, a job that I like and where I feel safe. And thanks to my mom for helping me build this paragraph. She knows my thoughts and my heart very well. By the way, I was able to call her mama until I turned seven years old. Never give up on us, comma. We just need an opportunity. Thank you.
that's how I met Lorena, my colleague in the organization, because our kids were together in uh, a, uh, a unit. And as a matter of fact, I'd like to recognize his teacher, uh, Ms. Cuello, Alexandra Cuello Rodriguez. She had a lot to do with their development. And it's thanks to teachers with compassion like hers that Carlitos was able to stand here and read that all by himself. Thank you, Carlitos. Thank you. And now we're gonna hear from Raul Cano. Hello there, my name is Raul Cano, and I'm just here to tell you all about the importance of understanding what it is to be kind no matter how different we are. I have a big heart and a calm personality. I live by what's in my heart, not by what's in my mind. Having autism shouldn't mean that I should be left out. I just connect with myself and the world differently. I want to let everybody know that there's nothing wrong with being different. Nobody is the same, and nobody's perfect. We each have our own personality. Everyone is special in their own way. To everyone out there, just be yourself, be who you are, be kind to others, always lend helping hands, be safe, be aware of what's happening around you, stay happy and healthy, enjoy life. I was diagnosed in 2013 at 10 years old. I, I had trouble making eye contact. I, I really don't like loud noise, such as loud music, arcades, parties, concerts, loud restaurants, or loud talking. I don't tolerate loud noise very much. I like calm, quiet, and peaceful environments such as a library, an office, a classroom, a store, or even my house. I'm someone who likes to be in quiet areas all the time. I don't think quiet is boring. I just think it's just very relaxing and it just makes you feel very calm. There's nothing wrong with liking that all the time. That's just how I am. I like to be repetitive. I, lo I like listening to the same songs. I play the same games. I like the same foods. I like doing repetitive tasks. I don't like change too much. I don't mind change once in a while, but I like to keep things the same. I'm very basic and I like to keep things real simple. I don't care for fancy food. It's never been my thing. I just eat regular food. It, I love food, it makes me really happy. I love to cook and I, and I love to go out to eat. I always order the same foods whenever we go out to eat. I'm currently a college student at Laredo College. I'm taking basic entry courses but I want to major in computer science since I'm very passionate about technology. I'll name just a few of my interests. I love vehicles. I, I like music. I like rap music, rock music, and country music. I love Instagram. I love technology. I, I do drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> I love video games. I love animated movies. I, was, uh, I love police shows. I love shopping. And I, and I do like to go shopping at Target all the time. <laughs> I love dogs a lot. I, unfortunately, I don't have a dog, but I do love dogs. I love the dark skies, and I love nature. So that's me. I hope you enjoyed my speech, and feel free to ask questions if you please. Thank you. Thank you, Raul. Um, as you can tell, I also like rock music, and I also like to listen to the same song over and over. I also love food. I turned it off? Oh. So, we have a lot in common. We have a lot in common, Raul. No wonder we get along so well. I mute, it's it's muted. Muted. Oh, it's muted? Yeah, yes. You did good. You did okay, awesome. Okay. Proud of you. All right, moving on. Would like to uh, now hand it over to uh, Councilman Dr. Tyler King. Say a few words. Okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Lisa from Santa Jose. Thank you for putting this on. It's a beautiful event. Um, you know, when I was starting to go off, I, I, I touch it off. Okay. When I was um, when I was about nine ten years old my three-year-old cousin wa caleb was diagnosed with autism and that was the first time our family had experienced um something of that nature and i, I remember being quite confused at the time and um and my aunt being really devastated and i remember the family being um uh, to an extent in denial and i and i f and i feel like that's something in the medical world, in my medical job, I, f I feel like I see that quite often where parents don't, sometimes in the moment, don't want to believe it. And um, we know how important it is 
to get er the earlier we can intervene, the better for the longer term outcome. And so I know everybody here has a story and probably knows someone and that's why you're here. Um, but the awareness goes, you know, beyond the people uh, sitting here, right? That's our job to, uh, to educate, uh, to educate people out in, who haven't experienced it yet and to make sure everyone is aware that if it does happen, because one in 36 is quite, quite a lot, um, right? Um, so it's, it's becoming more and more common, right? And um, I think about a 300% increase since 2000. You, you looked up some of the, the facts you mentioned, I also looked up, so I won't repeat them, but, uh, but um, you know, it's, it's, it's coming more and more common. So people need to be ready for that. And when, if, when and if it does happen to people, they need to know that, as it was said, it's, 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 it's okay, you know. Um, you know, and I, my, my daughter's here, four years old. Um, and it, it, this is just a remi reminder, in college I did a one-week Camp K counselor where basically you, each counselor is assigned to one patient with autism and you're with them the whole week. And I remember, um, you know, that was a, one of the toughest weeks of my life. I was responsible for Jake's uh, well-being, um, his, his bathing, his, 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 his eating, and realizing that the parents were getting that, um, that one-week break um, and then the other 51 weeks of the year, they were um, doing what I had to do. And, you know, just knowing how hard, I, it, it reminds me that my wife and I was in the back. Um, you know, sometimes it feels hard to have uh, our, you know, all the, our two daughters and everything. But it's, it's really, it's nothing compared to some of the challenges that you, the parents face, um, you know, in, in, the, in the beginning especially. So I want to say, you know, um, we... Uh, like it's not it's 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 just something that I wish more parents were aware of and uh, could understand and that's why we're trying to do things uh, you know here in the city um, of course ADA the ADA phase one of the playground here is one of the most um, well it's the first in its kind and my predecessor um, got it started and it ribbon cutting happened under my watch but if you give all the credit to him and the, and the middle schoolers who came up with this idea and then as you see here phase two uh, will continue uh, all along this way and there'll be a beach there'll be dunes that you can climb on um, there'll be sand uh, there will be a, a lot of sensory activities um, for for every child in Laredo but specifically to our kids who uh, will thrive in those environments so um, so anyway uh, yeah today as it's been mentioned today should be a, a, a not not it should be a happy and uplifting day but I'll, you know if, it's also something we take seriously. And just thank you, thank you so much uh, for giving y'all's testimonies. Um, I know my my cousin uh, Caleb is doing very well as a as a as he's an employee of Starbucks for the last five years, and he's he's uh, he's loving it. He loves every minute of it, and um, he's also one of the funniest guys in the world too. But, uh, but anyway, no. But uh, thanks thanks for being here. This is really important. Uh, thank you, Miss Anahosa. Um, like you mentioned, it's not awareness is one thing, action uh, is another. So we have to do both. So, yeah. So thank you for all you do, and everybody here for all you do. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Oh, I muted it again. Okay, so we had somebody that had a change of heart really quickly before I pass it on to Vanessa. Oh, and that's uh, another testimony, um, Ronnie De Leon. First of all, my name is Ronnie De Leon. I got diagnosed at the age of 23. I graduated from Martin High School, class of 03. Um, first of all, I like to quote my favorite movie of all time. Uh, music is everywhere. All you gotta do is listen to it. Cause that is my heart. My heart is music. My heart is movies. I. I brought my draft house friends here, uh, Alamo Draft House Burrito, because um, I have a story. I actually got bullied in a theater here in Laredo, uh, Cinemark. A girl bullied me, text threatened me. Managers were actually asking me questions about a friend of mine. I won't mention his name out of kind of city's heart, but. Um, it's been a long journey. 
I used to work for Walgreens. Thank you to all the managers at Walgreens that helped me out in my first years of work. Um, my parents. And I've known Lisa for about eight years now. I've been a vital leader of this group and thank you to my best friend, Veronica Castilla. She's an actor in, in the Heights movie. She came out as a dancer in, uh, in the Heights movie. I'm so proud of her. And also to Julio Cesaris, actor in Suicide Squad. They're friends of mine. Thank you, Ronnie. Okay, well, now I'm going to hand over the mic to Councilwoman Vanessa Perez. Say a few words. I have to adjust the mic a bit. Um, I'm going to try to talk calmly because I do have a loud voice and I know you all want calm voices. So I'm going to calm. I'm going to be calm. Um, You're doing great. Thank you. I try. Um, my name is Vanessa Perez. I'm the council member for District 7. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, first of all, I want to give thanks to the LEAF organization, Lisa, Lorena, and Daniela for putting this together and running this organization. As you can see, there's been a lot of families that have benefited from the work that they do. And I think the best part of having this type of organization is that you all become families. Um, this Lighted Up Blue ceremony is important to have every April because it reminds us to be more inclusive and understanding as a community and, and as, a, as a person, right? Like all of us have our part to play in being, making the city a better place, making the world a better place. And I think that um, we all have to understand the main message is that everybody should be, has, has, a, has a right to be wherever they wanna be. And we have to, you know, accommodate and make sure that everybody is able to accomplish whatever it is that they have in their hearts and in their dreams for themselves. And sometimes we have to do a better job as a community and as a country or as a city to be more equitable and inclusive, right? Uh, we talked, uh, Lisa talked a little bit about employment. Um, I wanna, I know Dr. Chamberlain's here and he's probably gonna touch on the Autism Coalition, which is a big initiative that the city of Laredo took on a couple years ago. And, and Erica is here too. She just got here, the assistant um, director for health department as well. And um, they've worked very tirelessly to make autism a priority for the city from a government standpoint. We have organizations like this one, but from government, we created the All Kinds of Minds master, master Plan, which he can touch on, but no other city in the country or in the state of Texas had done anything like that. So I want the people here in Laredo to know that from your government, that like, we do hear you and see you and we are working you know to try to make sure that you can accomplish everything that you want in the city of laredo i do want to mention that the city of laredo is an equal opportunity employer as well and um, we had a little policy shifts recently um, there was an issue with uh, the driver's license requirement on some positions we've modified that so anybody that wants to work at the city of laredo you know please apply um, we're happy to accept anyone and work with anyone. So if you want to come over and I don't know how you're going to want to work with all the crazy council members and city management, but if you're willing to, 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 to bear with us, uh, I used to know a few of them myself. Okay. Well, okay, well, you know how challenging we can be, I guess at times, but if you're willing, you know, come, come work with us and, and see if there's a Not position. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, and so, um, you know, just want to, I guess, highlight that. And, and um, basically, those were the main things that I wanted to touch on. And um, I do have a question for you. Um, um, when are we going to go to Target and get a coffee and walk around and shop? <laughs> okay. Okay. Awesome. I'm looking forward to that. I love doing that. But um, other than that, thank you all for spending your afternoon here and inviting me to speak. And uh, it's an honor. And whatever else we can do to make the city better for you all, just please always let us know. And we're here to listen and work and help. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Your, your support has been invaluable to our organization. Thank you very much.
And like she mentioned, there are exciting things on the horizon for the city of Laredo, especially uh, with Dr. Chamberlain's going to speak to you about the all kinds of matter, uh, all kinds of minds matter, the master plan, and the initiative. So, without any further ado, Dr. Chamberlain. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Hello, hello, hello. Um, first off, I'd like to say good afternoon, good evening to everybody here and thank the Laredo Education Aut um, Aut Educational Autism Foundation League for the invitation to be present with each of you. I'm honored to recognize the significance of April as Autism Awareness and Acceptance Month, particularly in the realm of public health. With the unwavering support of our community and specifically this group here, as Council Member Bet has just mentioned right now, um, we have achieved remarkable milestones in our, com in our commitment to fostering diversity, equity, and inclusion for all individuals living with disabilities in Laredo. And together we collaborated on the development and approval of the All Kinds of Minds Master Plan, which is a visionary blueprint for transformative change. The Master Plan serves as a beacon of hope, inspiring us to embrace the unique talents and capabilities of every member in our community, including those living with autism. To underscore the importance of the All Kinds Master Plan, we introduced the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Pledge a powerful symbol of our collective dedication to promoting awareness and inclusion for individuals with autism in the city of Laredo. Through the curriculum developed by the Laredo Public Health Department, we have empowered 28 organizations and 150 individuals to take the pledge, signaling their commitment to creating a more inclusive environment. Their participation and, com and completion of the curriculum has earned them a bronze, silver, or gold recognition, symbolizing the growth and elevation of our community support network for individuals living with autism. So that's an amazing feat. Look for those emblems that have this um, Autism Coalition, thank you to the Autism Coalition emblem on businesses to let you know that they are um, friendly, inclusive, and want to be equitable here in the city of Laredo. I'm also proud to announce that our efforts have extended beyond the mere rhetoric, and we have taken tangible step steps to apply and seek to secure over $10 million in funding to support and educate families and community members of, um, impacted by autism. This substantial investment reflects our unwavering dedication to championing the rights and well-being of individuals with disabilities and specifically those living with autism. Let us reaffirm our commitment to creating a community where every individual, regardless of their abilities, is embraced, valued, and empowered to reach their fullest potential. That is truly the definition of health equity. Together, we can build a more inclusive and compassionate, uh, compassionate society where all kinds of minds are celebrated and cherished. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Chamberlain. Yeah, that, the master plan is really, I, I'm really excited about that. Um, great things are coming. We just have to all work together. And we've, we're uh, very blessed to partner with the city of Laredo and to be part of uh, of that uh, initiative and we look forward to great things that are on on the horizon before I turn it over to a new a new uh, business that's in town of uh, rock the spectrum have you heard of rock the spectrum uh, I think it's a gym the, the owners are here so we can discuss it but I wanted to ask the police officers that are in the back if you can please step forward because I wanted to give you a special recognition for all that you do to keep our individuals safe. We and for probably wearing your for probably wearing your, your, your badge in of honor. Of course, yes ma'am. As you heard from some of our individuals here, it was very important that you we wanted to we wanted to invite you here today so that you can see our our individuals, our family, our members. Because we, as a mother, I worry sometimes because like Raul has mentioned, sometimes he doesn't give eye contact. And so some of our, some of our uh, loved ones drive, including my son. And my fear has always been that he may, um, I don't wanna say freak out, but that he may get startled or be afraid. And I wanted you all to know that they're, they're harmless, you know, these, they, some have been, I've heard read stories about them being accused of being on drugs or because they have not, um, they cannot give you any eye contact or may act a little differently. So that was the main reason why I wanted you all to come here. Well, I'd like to thank you for keeping, you know, 
our, our city safe, but so that you could see that there's many faces of, of autism here. And they're, they're good guys, and they're good people with great hearts, and they're, they're innocent. So, would you like to say a few words? Um, <laughs> sure. Um, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Chris Morales. I've been with the PD for, for about 10 years. And um, I, to, be, to, to let you know, I'm also a father of a, of a child with, uh, with autism. So it is a great privilege to be here and uh, get informed and uh, obtain all this information regarding uh, you know, the, the, new, uh, the new resources and uh, other, uh, other uh, things that are out here that you know, I wasn't even aware about. So, so with, with that being said, you know, um, I do have you know, a lot of experience dealing with the autism kids. And um, you know, it, is, it is difficult you know, sometimes you know, being, being a parent with a, with, a, with a child with autism. But at the end of, at the end of the day, it's it's all worth it because you know they're they're you know pure of heart. You know they're all loving and they're all you know they're all joy and uh, and you know ha happy and uh, ecstatic for for the for, for the most part. So so you know it really touched uh, uh, my heart right now when um when I I, for, I forgot um I, I forgot who who his name. Which one? The, the one that spoke first. Uh, Carlitos. Carlitos. When you mentioned that, uh, when uh, you you you, had, you didn't say dad for the first time till you till you were seven years old, and you know that really touched my heart because my my daughter, you know she has a, she's a nonverbal, and um, and I just broke down broke down you know the crying when when I heard that, so. So, you know I wasn't. There's hope, yes, ma'am. Yes, you know, I wasn't um, expecting to come up here, so I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, pl I didn't plan, I didn't plan or, or think about you know stuff to to say or, or mention, but I just wanted to say that you know, from 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 my experience. Thank you. Thank you. That was unexpected, but I'm, I'm we're glad you're here and count on all of us here for anything that you may need. Thank you. Well, wait, with that being said, um, Andrea Saldivar, please come up front. She's gonna talk to us a little bit about what the Spectrum, and it's a new business in town which provides uh, resources for the community. Muy buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Andrea Saldivar, mi esposo Gabriel Saldivar y yo. Vamos a abrir un gimnasio y Sebastián. Hi. <laughs> oh, because I have five years old, and I'm going to have a gym, and its name is going to be We Rock the Spectrum, the kids' gym for all kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all day, I have five years old, but uh, I don't like my loud music because I... I I'm in the park and my cousins are here. <laughs> already, they're already here. Bravo! Queremos empezar por contarles un poco de cómo empezó este proyecto y de qué es lo que trata. Nosotros tenemos dos hijos, Sebastián y Fernanda. Sebastián fue diagnosticado hace casi tres años dentro del espectro de autismo. Fue un proceso muy difícil y sigue siendo un trabajo de todos los días, ya que nadie te prepara para ser papá o mamá, y men mucho menos cuando viene un diagnóstico detrás. Más sin embargo, creo que nos ha unido muchísimo como familia. Y ha traído muchas cosas buenas, como la fue la idea de crear algo para nuestra comunidad. No sabíamos por dónde empezar y encontramos este gimnasio sensorial donde vimos la posibilidad de adquirir una franquicia y supimos que era algo que tanto nuestra familia como nuestra comunidad necesitaba. We Rock the Spectrum fue fundado en el 2010 por Dina Kimmel en Tarzana, California. La idea del gimnasio nace cuando le informan que el lugar donde le daban las terapias a su hijo iba a cerrar. Para ese tiempo, ella ya había transformado su cuarto en un gimnasio a sugerencia de su terapeuta ocupacional. 
estaba diseñado con equipo sensorial y ella inmediatamente empezó a ver un cambio en su hijo. Su hijo podía dormir mejor, comía mejor y estaba teniendo menos crisis. Su hijo no era el único beneficiado de este gimnasio. También su hija neurotípica y sus, hija y sus amigas disfrutaban mucho del equipo. Fue así como surge la idea de crear un gimnasio con ese tipo de equipo donde todos los niños de todas las habilidades pudieran jugar y aprender juntos. Dina abrió su primer gimnasio en septiembre del 2010 y se dio cuenta que la misión era más grande que su gimnasio y más grande que su comunidad de Tarzana. Actualmente tiene más de 100 gimnasios nacionalmente e internacionalmente. El gimnasio cuenta con equipo en donde puede ayudar en donde puede ayudar a los niños a sentirse regulados mientras se divierten, ya que todos los niños neurotípicos y neurodiversos tienen necesidades sensoriales. El gimnasio cuenta con muchos tipos de columpios, tirolesa, trampolines, pared para escalar y más. El gimnasio será un open play, pero también puede usarse para eventos privados como los son field chips, fiestas, clases, campamentos y otras cosas. En este momento estamos en busca aún de local, pero mientras tanto les agradeceríamos si pudieran empezar a correr la voz de este proyecto que viene muy pronto a nuestra ciudad. Finalmente me gustaría terminar diciendo el eslogan del gimnasio que va dirigido a todos aquellos padres que se han sentido incómodos o avergonzados en medio de una crisis cuando están en algún lugar público. Finally, a place where you never have to say I'm sorry. Thank you. Hi, my sister, her name is Fernanda, and I have five years old. And my and my gym is its name is Sarah We rock the sex of the kid the gym for all kids. And finally, a place where you never say, I'm sorry. Gracias, Andrea, gracias. Entonces, una pregunta. Dices que, dicen que les falta un local. Sí, estamos en busca todavía de ese proceso. Hemos estado viendo, pero todavía no conseguimos. Ok, pues a ver si puedes hablar con, con algunos de los regidores, a ver si te pueden ayudar con, con algo que puedan. Sí, claro a ver si sí. pueden encontrar un lugar. Y muchas felicidades por el, por el, por el gimnasio. Gracias. Ay,